I am a staff scientist at the Calus Visualization Core Laboratory. Today I'm going to show you how to launch a Jupyter server on IBEX that you can access from your local laptop or workstation. So the port of departure for this demo is going to be um, a previous video that I created on how to get started with the scikit-learn based data science project on IBEX. So in that video I showed you how to use this template repository on the Calus VizLab uh, GitHub organization page to create a a scikit-learn based data science project, how to clone that uh, template repo down onto IBEX, and then how to create the Conda environment um, for, the, uh, for the project on IBEX. So I will assume that you will have done both of those things before kind of moving forward with this video, which will show you how to use uh, Jupyter installed within that environment to launch a server on IBEX and then access it locally from your laptop or workstation. Okay, so here I'm logged into IBEX and I have changed into the directory containing my uh, scikit-learn data science project. If I run ls-l, you'll see that there is a conda environment in this EMV directory and that I can activate it and uh, I can list its contents. And I'm not gonna walk through the contents. Uh, I did that in a previous video, but you should see similar packages and version numbers to what you have are installed, installed here. Okay, um, I'm gonna clear this out. And I'm going to deactivate the environment. Okay, clear again. So, I have included scripts in the bin directory of the template repository to help you get started uh, with your uh, launching your Jupyter server on IBEX. So the two relevant scripts are launch Jupyter server sbatch and launch Jupyter server srun. And then I have some instructions here that explain how these scripts work. So I'll just walk you through. Uh, I'll just walk you through the scripts. So I'm gonna start with the srun script. So the srun script, we don't actually run directly. It's just uh, wrapped by the sbatch script. And I'll explain why in a moment. But this is where most of the logic lives. So in particular, we launch the, um, the script using a bash uh, login shell. This is important because it is what allows us to have a conda activate command inside of our JavaScripts on IBEX. So that's a general rule uh, that you'll need to follow to get conda activate to work properly in your JavaScripts. You'll need to run those scripts inside of a bash login shell. Okay, then the rest of the script is mostly setting up something called SSH tunneling um, on IBEX. In particular, the the script is going to launch a Jupyter server on a remote compute node on IBEX. But before we launch the job, we don't know what node on IBEX you're going to land on. And we also don't know what ports on that node are going to be available um, to run the Jupyter server on. So we have to capture both of those bits of information inside the script and then log it to the slurm.error file so that you can then get the information that you need to uh, connect to your Jupyter server locally. So in particular, we're going to get the IBEX node name and uh, the Kaos user, which will be you, and then get Slurm to assign a free port for us to use when launching the Jupyter server. Then we are going to echo out an SSH command, which is easy to get wrong, and so I've just created the proper command for you and it will get echoed to your slurm.error script and we can just copy and paste it into a terminal to set up the actual SSH tunnel between the compute node on IBEX and your local machine, whether it's your laptop or workstation. And this will work so long as you are on the KAUST intranet or if you are connected to the KAUST intranet via VPN. Okay. And then finally, at the very end, we actually launch the Jupyter uh, server itself. Okay, let's take a look at the sbatch script. So here is the sbatch script. 
So all the sbatch script does is actually call the launch Jupyter server .s run script and ask Slurm to reserve a single port for the Jupyter server to run on. And then we add some Slurm headers to actually request the resources. So the way that I've set the script up here is for what I would call kind of prototyping, uh, interactive work. So I'm going to use the debug partition. I'm going to ask for the longest amount of time that I can get on the debug partition, which is currently two hours. And then I'm going to ask for four cores and four gigs of memory per, per core, which works out to 16 gigs in total. So that's kind of like um, good laptop level resources for interactive use on, on IBEX. And this will generally guarantee that this job will launch immediately. I'm not asking for a whole lot of resources for a large amount of time. So this will allow me to kind of uh, prototype a training script or larger workflow, get it running, tested, ready to go, and then I can launch that larger workflow as a batch job uh, on the IBEX cluster itself. Another way that you could, um, if you need to launch uh, an interactive workload and you want to have more resources than, than two hours, um, for example, then you need to use the batch partition instead of the debug partition. So just bear that in mind. So you would want to change this uh, to from debug to batch if you wish to have your interactive resources available for more than two hours. Okay, cool. So let's, uh, let's actually get this thing running. So I am in the project, what I call the project root directory. Um, and then we will use sbatch to launch our Jupyter server. And so our job has been submitted. And if we look at our jobs, we can see that it's already running and it's running on this particular node. And we don't know what port it's running on. We'll have to have to figure out what port it's running on in just a minute. So we can do that by looking at the um, the error file for the Slurm job. And I guess before I actually show you that, if I run an ls on the bin directory, you can see that here we have these two Slurm dot error and slurm dot out scripts for the job that we just launched. So if we take a look at the script or the error file, we can see that our Jupyter Lab server is already running um, and that we have this command here for us that we can copy. So this is going to set up the SSH tunnel between a particular compute node on IBEX running uh, for the Jupyter server that's going to be running at a particular port. And we want to make a connection between our local laptop or workstation and that remote um, compute node at a particular port where our Jupyter server is going to be running. So after you've copied that, you can just do like a command or control N to get a new terminal window, copy and paste. And then you have now set up the connection. Once you've logged in, then the connection is basically set up. And so we can just minimize that. Now, um, in the instructions, I explain the, the kind of the structure of the second link that you need to come and copy and paste. So in the server logs, it will generally be towards the very bottom. So here it is, in fact, right here. So this is the URL to localhost on your laptop or workstation at a particular port where the traffic from the IBEX compute node is being forwarded and then this token is the access token for your JupyterLab server. So every JupyterLab server gets an access token. Um, if you don't have that access token, even if you happen to land on a compute node and a particular port where someone else's JupyterLab server is running, without the token, you won't actually be able to log in and see anything. So it's kind of a, an extra layer of security provided by uh, the Jupyter, uh, JupyterLab itself. Um, obviously, don't share your access token with uh, with anyone um, unless you want them to be able to access your JupyterLab server running on your compute node on IBEX and then they can make changes and do whatever they want. So generally not a good idea to share those access tokens. So but now if you copy and paste that uh, URL into your browser then 
relatively quickly, you should get JupyterLab up and running. So I've had this process take a little bit longer sometimes, depending on what kind of browser you're using. So I'm using uh, Brave, which is a Chrome-based browser, which usually is pretty snappy. Um, and I have recently updated it to the most recent version of the browser, um, which also sometimes, uh, if you have an old version of a browser, that can sometimes uh, make JupyterLab a bit slow to load. Um, this is taking longer than normal. So I'm just going to sit here um, and hope that it loads. There we go. OK, cool. So now we're up and running. So we have our, our Jupyter server running on Ibex, but I've now connected to it here at my local, uh, my local workstation. And I can do everything that I would normally do. I can launch notebooks. I can launch consoles. I can launch terminal windows. I can develop uh, Python scripts. Um, kind of all the, the the normal kind of interactive workflows that you would be that you would be used to. Okay. So, in some follow-on videos, I'll I'll show you maybe how to launch some training scripts, um, develop some training scripts for Scikit-Learn jobs, and then launch them as batch jobs on Ibex. Uh, for now, though, I'm going to call an end to this video. I just wanted to show you how to launch a Jupyter Notebook on Ibex. Um, and so hopefully now you can follow this video and figure out how to do that yourself. When you want to end your work, when you're done, then all you need to do is to come up here and go to shut down after you've saved all your work, obviously. And then you would say shut down, and then the server is stopped. And this has gracefully stopped your, your job as well. So if you close this browser, and now if we go back and check, let's check the, uh, the logs. Um, so now you'll see that there has been a shutdown request that has been processed. And so the Jupyter uh, Lab server has been shut down. And if we were to look at the queue, we'll see that the job that was running has is no longer running. So our job is finished and everything's been cleaned up nicely. Okay, great. Um, so feedback is always welcome. If you have any feedback, please leave it in the comment section um, below. If you have any questions about this video, um, please you know, reach out to us uh, via email or Slack. Um, and I can try to help you out or my colleagues can try to help you out. And be on the lookout for follow-on videos for how to uh, set up a um, a training script to launch jobs uh, on Ibex. So that'll be the next thing I'll cover. All right, bye for now.